welcome to our week of prayer. When you're feeling drained and weighed down by negative emotions, hit the pause button and take a moment to refresh your mind. Refresh your mind and think about all the good and positive things in your life. During our week of prayer, I would like to encourage you to make use of the resource that we are going to share with you. The resource is called Flourish. Flourish has loads of practical and easy to use ideas that help anyone of any age choose positive emotions even when facing difficult situations. I will be sharing the link at the end of the video and it will display on the screen below. Let us read Psalms 103 together and reflect on God's goodness and love towards us. Today we are choosing to manage our thoughts. Psalms 103 of David Praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, and he remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you, his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you, his servants, who do his will. Praise the Lord in his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Welcome, beloved sisters in Christ, to our week of prayer, day one, Sunday. Our message today was written and will be shared by Kayleen Moth. But before we start, I would like to share our scripture verse and have a short word of prayer. Our scripture verse is found in John 3 verse 16. We know it so well. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you so much that we can spend these precious moments together in prayer. Please guide us and open our hearts and minds that we will know that the sacrifice, even though it is a reality, is worth it. Amen.
So what is God asking you to say yes to today? What sacrifices may be involved in saying yes to God? We come across a story in the Bible of a lady named Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary of Nazareth. Now, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is one of the most recognized and influential people in the Bible. Her story is miraculous. She's a woman of courage, strength, and immense faith. While she's best known for giving birth to Jesus, the Messiah, there are other powerful lessons that we can learn from her life and story. Isaiah mentions her in his prophecy in Isaiah 7 verse 40. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a Hebrew name that means God with us. And this prophecy was fulfilled through Mary, the mother of Jesus, simply because of her obedience. Mary received the greatest honor God can pay. He chose her to mother his son, probably a teenager at the time. It's important to note that Mary had done nothing to deserve such favor, absolutely nothing. Yet, her simple response spoke deeply of her humble faith. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Without hesitation, Mary said yes to God's plan to take over her life. Her simple response of saying yes to God is where we come to understand and admire her as she knowingly and willingly decided to give up a life of ease, freedom and selfish indulgence. For a life that would continually require self-sacrifice and self-denial. One could imagine that she prayerfully decided to walk with God step by step to advance his kingdom. She was not only involved in God's work, but she spent as much time as possible developing a solid personal relationship with her Heavenly Father. Mary was willing to sacrifice her plans and reputation because she trusted and firmly believed God's word and his plans. This is evidence of a life that was hidden in God. She recognized his voice because she had a connection with God. And this connection was formed through a life of prayer and devotion. Saying yes to God, as Mary did, usually involves sacrifices. It did for Mary, who endured the doubts of her fiancé and the scorn of neighbours who saw her pregnant before marriage. Saying yes meant bearing the pain of childbirth. It meant fleeing to far off Egypt to protect her baby from Herod's soldiers. It meant raising a child she did not completely understand but most of all it meant watching a son die on the cross john 3 verse 16 says for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life these words tell, of, tell the story of salvation, God's love for the world, God's gift of his son, and the opportunity and privilege for anyone who believes to be saved. Mary believed, and through this she was blessed. And I'm not referring to her calling as the mother of the Messiah, but to the greatest blessing she received, which was that a child saved her from her sins. The same blessing, the same reward that is given to everyone who believes in him. I believe that it was the quality of Mary's spiritual life that qualified her to be the mother of Jesus. 
Her life speaks about one that is connected to God through constant prayer, unwavering submission, total obedience, complete trust, and abiding faith. At the wedding feast, we see that Mary turned to Jesus right from the beginning. She realized and knew that Jesus has the power to supply all our needs. She experienced the blessed assurance of his presence and ability to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Mary experienced in a very real way the power of the indwelling Christ. One of the most impressive characteristics of Mary, the mother of Jesus, was the strength and depth of her humble faith. Mary believed God's words full stop. When Gabriel tells her that she will become pregnant, Mary only had one logical question. How will that happen since I've never slept with a man? Once she got her answer, Mary had no further questions. From then on, she held Jesus in her heart by faith before she held him in her womb and in her hands. In Luke 1 verse 45, Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, commends Mary's faith. Blessed is the woman who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promise. Here lies the key. We must believe. Believe that God is willing and able to do for us exceedingly, abundantly, above what we can imagine. And we come to see that Mary believed and she was obedient even if it meant watching her son die on the cross. Our last glimpse of Mary, though, shows her among the disciples after the resurrection. They were praying for the Holy Spirit Jesus had promised. Mary had begun her relationship with Jesus by holding his tiny form in her arms. And in the end, she realized that she must let Jesus hold her. He was not only her child, he was her Lord. And to that too, Mary said yes. And because Mary said yes, we get to experience God's love for us and the links taken to save us from our sins. Are you ready to experience the transforming power of prayer as Mary did? Her entire outlook changed. She became connected to God and had a beautiful life-changing experience when she, above all women, was blessed to become the mother of the Savior of the world. Prayer is a conversation with God. We go to Him with our needs, our desires, and our hearts, but it is also an opportunity for us to listen to Him. Prayer transforms. It inspires hope. It brings us closer to God. It helps us to focus our minds on things above and will transform us from warriors to warriors, as it did Mary. Thank you so much, Kayleen, for sharing that very inspiring message. May we say yes to God today. To close, let us have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, please make my life like the life of Mary, a woman who was known for her total obedience and surrender to you. Help me to realize that I have been chosen by you to a higher calling, to total surrender. Help me to be willing to put everything on the altar. And not only as an obligation, but out of love and dedication to you, my Savior. May I be changed through your grace and the privilege of prayer. Amen. Oh, and